On January 1st, 1994, just hours after the Mexican government signed the North American Free Trade Agreement, a group of indigenous revolutionaries known as the Zapatista National Liberation Army declared war on the Mexican government. In response, the Mexican government were considering bombing this area of Chiapas until the church intervened. Once the church had intervened and the bombings were no longer going to happen, the Zapatistas retreated into the jungle and for the next 12 days, conflict ensued. These conflicts resulted in over 100 dead and many more were disappeared. And it was here, after the two weeks of fighting, that representatives from the Mexican government and the Zapatistas met in this cathedral to sign a treaty of peace. The Zapatistas vowed to never give up their weapons and the only way they would is through death. Here we are almost 30 years later and the Zapatistas still control over one third of the state of Chiapas. Today, I'm gonna to jump on a couple of scooters, me and my pal, and we're gonna go try find them. Pay attention to the Coca-Cola sipping all the water from the earth. I'm gonna tell you a little story about that a little bit later on. How far? Ten. Yeah. Where do we? Where were we gonna stop? For fuck's sake! <laughs> Come on, man. I'm after you. I'm after you. I don't know where I'm going. That way. All right. I'm back just under half the tank now. As you can see, we're right in the clouds now. So it's starting to rain. We're also in the red on fuel. So six miles to the nearest town. Hopefully there's fuel there so we can continue on to find the Zapatistas. These roads are absolutely deadly. Pray, pray, pray that there is a fuel station in this town. We are absolutely soaked through and it's freezing up here. But we believe we're now in, in the town of Larizaga. Definitely got that wrong. The fuel hunt continues. So the universe is delivered. We've made it to our gasoline station. Thankfully, we've seen this sign as we were coming along this hill. Check this view out. Top of the mountain. Getting ourselves a little bit of uh, the old gasolina. Gracias. Gracias. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mucho leak. <nique. laughs> it's alright. It's all so right. good. ¿Cómo te llamas? Rosa. Rosa? Yeah. Mucho gusto. Nice to meet you. Uh -huh. uh, we're staying in uh, San Cristobal and we're just exploring. Okay. Exploring. ¿Para dónde va? ¿Para dónde? Uh, Oventec. We're part of uh, the Oventec to find the Zapatista. The Zapatista here. Uh, yeah. yeah? So this is the region. Okay. Awesome. Gracias. Right, we're fueled up and we've got confirmation that we are in the Zapatista area, so we're going to keep on driving around. In the distance there, there's a huge Mexican flag leading up to what looks like a cathedral. This definitely has side mission written all over it, so we're going to go all the way to the bottom of the stairs and see this huge flag leading up to the church. Hello, buenas tardes. I don't know if we get back up this. Yeah. You reckon? Yeah. Oh, then I'm after you, sir. <laughs> you don't look so confident now. <laughs> and that didn't fill me with confidence. Hola, buenas tardes. Um, como, como llegamos esca, the escala to the, the stairs? H how do we get there? Uh -huh. <laughs> this is too deep. <laughs> it's too much, eh? Si. Is there another way around? Oh, is it solo? Ah, yeah. oh, no way. Is that the only way? Yeah. Mate, the, the back. Come, come here. The back's not good. Okay. Yeah? I'm yeah? going down here. <laughs> <laughs> See, this thing's okay. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. See? Yeah, we're good to go, mate. Yeah. They reckon you can go down there, yeah, towards Oven Tech. Yeah. Nah. Come on. Look how steep it is. Yeah, you got a bike. 
We'll get down there, mate. If he can, we can. What, Did he just crash? <laughs> I think so. I don't know why they're running. <laughs> oh, mate, that's steep. Hey, I told mate, we're never going down there. Not in a million years. Oh, he did crash as well. Did he crash? Yeah. Is he being? Instead of going down there, we'll go up here. Yeah, down. Right, gracias. That's the other way to go. It was a cyclist failure, but it was well worth it. Andale, andale! Vamos, let's go! Scoot up, boys, scoot in! <laughs> Check out either side of the road and the hillsides, they're covered in corn. It's these lands which the Zapatistas fought the Mexican government over. There's crops everywhere, even the top of these mountains, look! Look at that river running through! This must be some of the most fertile lands on the planet, they've got to be! So there is water on these mountains, however, getting water to the townships and the city of San Cristobal has been problematic lately, and it's not because of the lack of water. Actually, despite the victory by the Zapatistas here, Exploitation still occurs from the major corporations. Most of the water that has come from this region is used by the Coca-Cola factory. In fact, they take over 500 million litres of water from this region every year. So we've just pulled off the road here a couple of miles from Oventec. Subcomandante Marcus, the leader of the Zapatistas, the Zapatistas were part of a much bigger resistance group called the Clandestine Revolutionary Indian Committee. Marcus is an interesting character. He wasn't actually an indigenous person. He had become disillusioned with modern life in Mexico City. So he headed to the fertile lands of Chiapas. When he got here in 1983, he used his skills and his expertise as a far left philosopher and communicator. And he intertwined his beliefs and his philosophy with the locals here and it became known as Zapatismo. His main gripe was that the land should be owned by the people who work it. So he was a resistance against the elites and the powers that be. Oh, And we have just entered the Zapatista zone. Let's pack up and get a look at some of this. So we've come to the entrance of the Zapatista village, I think you would call it. As you see, there's lots of lots of signage about the rebellion and the revolution. We're trying to get in there now at the minute. We've given our names and they're going to find out if we can get permission to go inside. Obviously, the language barrier is a difficulty. We're doing what we can and we're going to try and get in there and see some of these revolutionaries that still hold the land here against the Mexican government. We're getting to do this. <laughs> nice one. Gracias. So that's the school there, eh? The Red Star. The media describes the Zapatistas as a far left anarchist movement, but they claim not to be that. They don't like to be categorized politically. Check this out. Medicina Natural. Like, yeah, Medicina Natural. La Resistancia. Oh, wow. Oh, right. The women of the resistance. So it wasn't just men fighting in the resistance and in the war. The women played a huge part in it too. Women are a big part of the uh, Zapatista movement. And actually, the committee that runs the Zapatistas, when they come together, they aim at having a 50-50% split between the male and females who are making the decisions. How long here for you? Así es, este. Solo por un momento, solo hasta aquí nomás podemos parar todavía. 
y solo quieren, quieren ver, conocer de lejos nomás desde acá, solo así, y de aquí podemos salir, ¿sí? The resistance is alive. Check this out. Gracias por tu uh, resistencia sí, uh, pues, contra sí. las sí, pues, alitas. Sí, sí. Sí. sí, bueno, gracias. Sí, <laughs> Viva la resistencia. Eh? Yeah. There's some messages on these boards. I'm going to go read them out because there's some very, very interesting messages. So the media here would call these people the far left. And when I think of far left, I think of communism. Here is almost like a, the, the way I understand it is a democratic, socially owned land where the community comes and the local community owns the land that they work and they make the decisions that affect their lives. But here, check some of these signs out. And this one's really interesting. So the first half of this message is talking about the Zapatistas and their movement to disrupt the land from the world being owned by the capitalists. And then the second bottom of this, it says, to the people of Ukraine and Russia, we are the people. Putin and Zelensky are tyrants. Ready, bro? Off we go.